Um, I'm Diana Short. I'm an epidemiologist in the modeling and monitoring unit. And thanks to Natalie and the GOAT team, it's my pleasure to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Maggie in the ceiling. Um, she's going to talk to you today about mycoplasma ovo pneumoniae. Uh, just a little bit about Maggie. Uh, she's a veterinarian, a board-certified anatomic pathologist, and she holds a PhD in immunology and infectious disease. Her pathology training uh, was at the University of California, Davis. Uh, she did a two-year residency there, and then she went on and did a two-year um, fellowship in wildlife pathology and zoo pathology at the University of Wisconsin. Her PhD and current research focus is in small ruminant infectious diseases and immunology, uh, specifically respiratory disease, in both domestic and wild small ruminants. She currently serves as a veterinary medical officer at the Animal Disease Research Unit out in the Palouse um, at Washington State, uh, but she will soon be transitioning over to um, Kansas, uh, where she'll be um, using her skills as a pathologist um, in their diagnostic laboratory, and she'll be an assistant professor there. So thank you all for your attention today, and please welcome Dr. Maggie Highland. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that introduction. Um, yeah, as I just said, I will be transferring to KSU, so the Kansas uh, State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory, actually in just a week and a half. Uh, and that is where this study, um, the, the analysis of the samples that you all will be sending will be taking place at the diagnostic lab there. So mycoplasma over the ODA, uh, just a very brief amount of very brief information on, on what this bacterium is. So it's an opportunistic pathogen or something considered a commensal uh, a bacterium of the, respi of the respiratory tract. It is typically carried by hosts with no obvious consequence. Um, there's some indication though that particularly in domestic sheep there can be subclinical impact. So more of a subclinical pneumonia uh, this organism can cause. Um, it infects or is carried by or has been detected in to date in um, Cabernet, which are sheep, goats, and mascots. And for quite some time, um, it's been thought that these were the only carriers of this organism. However, uh, recent um, studies uh, done in, performed in my laboratory with USDA have indicated that Capriolinae, which are deer family members, can also carry this organism. We, and I have listed on the screen here um, the species that we've identified with it to date. Uh, it's also been associated with disease in the old deer and the white tail deer and in a single caribou path um, or nearly, I guess, an animal one. That is a published report now. Um, I've also detected it in a few samples um, in bison, uh, one from Montana and, and multiple from Idaho that we tested. Other people have published this bacteria being found in cattle and antelope, but the reports are, are few and rare. Um, one report in, in Minnesota Qatar, where it has impacted dairy and antelope, and the other was identified in cattle in Colorado. And those cattle had been in association with wild sheep, the so bighorn sheep, that were experiencing a uh, mnemonic outbreak. A little bit more on that in the coming slide. But um, they had gone back and tested these cattle, and they too, they were still carrying the organism that was two to three weeks after they had culled the corn sheep that were feeding alongside the cattle in that location, that had described in that location. So when it's associated with disease, um, as I, I just mentioned briefly when I was talking about the self-clinical impact, it can cause pneumonia um, or upper respiratory disease, which is sinusitis or otitis, which is just a little ear infection in infected animals. Um, it, its ability to cause disease, particularly pneumonia, is often considered due to um, the way in which it colonizes the respiratory tract and it can cause some hemophiliary clearance um, uh, inhibition, which allows other bacteria that are considered more virulent 
um, such as the pasteurlaceae or tuberella, maybe some other fusobacterium, to fall into the lungs and um, set up shop, if you will, and, and cause a more severe disease than what uh, pure mycoplasma infection alone will cause. So why is it one with SPA mycoplasma and monier prevalence in goats? Um, uh, so in addition to the fact that it can cause disease in sheep and goats, small well, domestic ruminants, um, either coughing syndrome or an atypical pneumonia, or like I mentioned, the upper respiratory disease entities, it is also um, now fairly well recognized as one of the primary agents associated with big-horn sheep respiratory disease complex. And this probably really um, is where the importance and the sensitivity of this bacterium lies. Um, since it's been identified as the primary infectious agent of big-horn sheep respiratory disease about a decade ago, it's really come into a lot of, um, a, it's really come to a lot of attention into the spotlight. Um, and most of this is due to some of the social impacts that this um, bacterium and the presence of this bacterium may hold on domestic small ruminants. So, for example, goats are considered a transmission source of animal pneumonia to wild, to wild small ruminants. So, not just to bighorn sheep in the lower 48, but also to wild small ruminants in Alaska. So, they have dull sheep there, bighorn sheep. Now, the sensitivity of this lies in the fact that there are currently and have been ongoing limitations placed on grazing and weed brush clearing on public lands. Um, there's restrictions and limitations um, that are either already established or are underway for use of pack boats in the western United States in areas that are deemed to be crunchy habitat. And there are also um, proposals to ban or heighten the regulations on small domestic permanent in Alaska. Um, this, this bacteria has had a big impact in that state. Um, there's also social pressures placed on small ruminant owners that own that own uh, domestic sheep or domestic goats in areas that are deemed uh, bighorn sheep or wild sheep habitat. And uh, like social pressures, I mean perhaps neighbors or other pressures that can be applied by wildlife agencies on people that own these animals on their own private land as to whether or not they're carrying this agent that's considered um, an important uh, health risk to the corn sheep. So a little more about why we're going to, why, why we propose um, investigating mycoplasma with monia prevalence in goats during the NOM 2019 study. Um, uh, studies that have been done to date have discord results in, in relatively smaller scale studies than what we're going to do with the NOM study. So in 2016, um, I led a PACO study that agent personnel uh, helped collect hundreds of samples. Um, so a, a thank you to the agent personnel that, that participated and assisted with this um, project. Um, in that project, we found an overall 8% prevalence in the 571 animals that were tested. So these were cat goats specifically, or animals that resided on the premises where cat goats resided. The highest prevalence was found in kids. If we got rid of the kids that were sampled, the prevalence fell way below uh, 5% on these animals. I want to say it was like 3.2 in the adults. Um, and then overall, 17% of the birds that we tested of the 83 premises had at least one animal that had a detection on that premises. And this again was work that was done with USDA, and then we also had duplicate swabs for those that collect them. They collect the two swabs were collected at each time point from these animals and while uh, did confirmatory testing on the second swab. And then another study that also um, that I that I led with USDA um, and in collaboration with the Alaska State Veterinarian, and again, Waddle received second samples on these, and Waddle is a Washington Animal Disease Diagnostic Laboratory, for anybody not familiar with that acronym. But those studies, in, in, in this study, that um, the samples 
were collected between 2017 and late 2018. There may have been a few collected yet this past winter that fell into 2019. So out of 485 goats that were tested, they had a preference of 2.5 percent, and that was um, that was from 12 percent of the goat herds that were tested, um, and we tested a total of 23 goat herds. Now this is this is where the visiting court comes in a bit. So the Washington in Washington State there is a published uh, study that predicted that did some modeling and predicted values that, that came up with um, a 28 percent of goats overall would be carriers of mycoplasma pneumoniae. They tested 84 goats total. Um, this study also indicated that 58% of goat herds would have at least one animal that was positive on the premises at any time of detection. So quite a bit higher. Um, and this study was conducted by uh, WSU um, uh, personnel and uh, bottles of the testing and the uh, Washington Department of Fish and Game was also involved. All of these animals were tested from the state of Washington. And just something to mention, prior to um, this testing and sample, the sample collection and testing was done prior to testing methods being updated as it was for a long time unknown that um, some of the testing methods that are published at uh, may result in false negatives or cross-react with, at the time, it was an unknown mycoplasma. Um, species, I call it mycoplasma conjunctive a like because um, the test, when you look at the 16S RNA uh, gene sequence, it's more similar to mycoplasma conjunctive a, but it's definitely not that based on the, based on the similarity in, um, in the DNA in that region of that gene. Um, so what that may have uh, played a role in this high detection, I think it's unknown um, at this time. However, I will say goats seem to carry this, um, this currently uncharacterized mycoplasma or respiratory associated mycoplasma at a higher prevalence than the ones that I have studied anyway, at a higher prevalence than they carry mycoplasma over the morning. So I think it's important um, to close up here, sorry. Um, I think uh, that that's why it's important um, for risk analyses that are that are underway and and maybe corrections on risk analyses of what risk goes so that the goes actually pose to big horn sheep in transmission of mycoplasma pneumoniae as transmission source of mycoplasma pneumoniae. And I think it's also important um, that we investigate mycoplasma pneumoniae problems in goats. Um, just for the impact that this uh, potential pathogen or opportunity pathogen may have on domestic goat health, as it seems to me that it's less recognized by goat owners um, than it is by sheep owners um, as a pathogen in the in, in goat. And that is pretty much all I have for the part of And just uh, thank you for inviting me to give a very brief overview of the importance of this study. Um, it's hard to pick out when there's so much to talk about about like and money and exactly what to share, but I'm always happy to talk about this bacteria and if there are any questions I can take them now or feel free to contact me um, at any time and, and I'd be happy to discuss further. Any questions for Maggie? Yes, Maggie. I don't see any questions at this time, Maggie, but we'll make sure that they have your contact information in case anyone comes up with questions. Thanks again for being able to present today. All right. Thank you.